All right, guys, if you haven't heard, um, the House has approved the sham, because that's what it is. Th this is a sham. January 6th commission, despite GOP opposition. And I'm going to tell you guys, this video right here, I, 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 I'm done with these Republicans. Okay, I, I'm done with these weak Republicans, because 35 of them voted in favor of this bill. And I'm so sick and tired of these Republicans continuing to bend over for the democrats and just take it right specifically on issues that the republican party is trying to move past because they want to be democrats okay they want to be democrats at this point the 35 republicans that voted in favor of this bill probably should just take the r out of that name and add a d right just add a D beside your name because you're a donkey. You're acting like an ass. There's nothing bipartisan about this commission. There's nothing bipartisan about it. But before I get into this rant, let me read a little bit more here about what's going on so you guys have more context. Because I'm about to, again, I'm about to go off on this because I, I hate this. This is ridiculous. So let's read here. The House voted on Wednesday to approve legislation to establish a bipartisan commission to investigate the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol, despite growing opposition from Republicans who object to the proposed structure and scope of the panel. The bill, which was negotiated in part by GOP uh, congressmen, passed by a vote of 252 to 175 with all Democrats and 35 uh, Republicans voting in favor. But the bill faces an uphill battle in the Senate as it is unclear whether it will receive enough Republican support to advance. Republican Congressman John Katko uh, was heavily involved in formulating a deal which made significant concessions to Republicans. The panel would evenly the panel would be evenly divided between members uh, appointed by Democrats and Republicans and the GOP appointed commissioners who have a uh, veto power over any subpoena. Catco defended the bill in a speech ahead of the vote saying that an independent 9-11 style review is critical to removing the politics surrounding the events of January 6th. He urged his colleagues on both sides of the aisle to set aside politics just this once to support the bill. This is about facts. This is not partisan politics, Catco said. We would have never got to this point if it was about partisan politics politics all right listen man before i get into this let me make it clear because i got to make it clear anytime i talk about what happened on january 6 my stance on this um i said it then and i'll say it now um i do not condone, condone anything that happened on january 6 it was bad i do not support the violence i actually think that it was the worst thing that could happen to the conservative movement i really do it was bad okay it set the movement back it set the republican party back and it really was a gift for the democrats that's really what it was that's really what it was. But with that being said, this bill is a sham and all 35 Republicans who voted for this bill should remove the R from their name and just put a D. Just add a D to your name. And we're going to go ahead and focus our resources on primary and you out of office because you got to go. You got to go. Look, guys, when it comes to this bill, OK, just pay attention to the way they're framing this. We need to set up a non 11 style commission. They're comparing what happened at the Capitol to 9-11, guys. Okay, Th that's what they're doing. And in my opinion, that's disrespectful to those who lost their lives on 9-11. It really is. It really is. It's very disrespectful. It's very disrespectful for how big the event was. That event was probably, what, the biggest terror attack on U.S. soil in our history of our country? And you're comparing what happened on January 6th to that? You said we need to set up a 9-11 style commission. That's the framing on this thing, guys. And there's nothing bipartisan about this bill whatsoever. Nothing bipartisan about it. And I'm so sick and tired of these weak Republicans caving to the Democrats because they just want to look good for the liberal media and the elites in Washington. Because that's all this is. That's all this is. We're trying to move on past those events. We're moving on past that. The Republican Party is trying to move on past that. But we can't move on when you have Republicans that continue to go along with the Democrats and play their little games when the Democrats whole goal is to continue to talk about January 6th forever. They will not stop talking about it. They will not move past it. They're not going to. You know why they're not going to? Because it plays into their favor. They can forever use it to haunt the GOP. It doesn't matter what the GOP does. If the GOP cut Trump off today, 
they would still use January 6th against the GOP. So ain't no reason to try to compromise with them on this. Because this is not even compromise. This is a sham. This is a scam. There's nothing bipartisan about this. If this was bipartisan, guys, you know what a bipartisan bill would be? A bipartisan bill would be, all right, cool. Let's investigate what happened on January 6th. But we got to investigate everything that happened last summer and throughout all last year when it came to these protests and violence in the street that has cost this whole country billions of dollars. Billions of dollars of damage. Let's investigate both. If we want to investigate both, that's cool. That's bipartisan. What this bill is that John Katko ne negotiated is not bipartisan. It's not. It's him bending over and taking it from the Democrats because he don't want to look bad. He want to look like, well, I'm trying to get stop political violence. Well, if you're trying to stop political violence, I agree with you. We should be against political violence. But let's be against political violence on both sides. Let's do both. Because unless you're going to do a 9-11 style commission to investigate what happened all last year, then it's not bipartisan. It's a non-starter. We can't even negotiate on this. And then you got the Democrat, Nancy Pelosi. We've given up significant concessions to the Republicans. No, you have not. You have not given up anything. And you know what's funny, guys? The Democrats never do this. When the far leftists, okay, and the people on the Democrat side, they're extremists. When they're extremists, do crazy stuff. You notice how they never go out there and attack their extremists, right? When they, when Maxine Waters was out there talking all that smack before the Derek Chauvin uh, verdict, okay, calling for uh, getting confrontational if they don't get their way, you notice how all the Democrats, regardless of whether or not they knew what she actually said, they automatically stood by her. You notice how they do that? That's what they do. They don't care about what's done wrong on, on their side. They just stand by it no matter what. So why would the GOP be any different? I mean, what's the point? Why is it that we have Republicans that continue to cave to the Democrats, but yet the Democrats will never cave? They didn't cave on Cuomo. They ain't really doing anything about that. No, let's call it. Let's have a, an investigation, a commission into Cuomo. Why did Cuomo cover up his nursing home scandal and then he received $5 million book deal? Why did he do that? Let's investigate that. Things that actually cost thousands of people's lives, Democrats don't have to talk about it because Republicans are not focusing the conversation on that because we got Republicans that would rather focus more on something that we've moved on past or we try to move on past something that, again, was a bad event. It was a terrible event. I don't condone it. I think it was wrong. But again, in terms of the grand scheme of things, was it really worse than what we saw all last summer in terms of actual damage caused to this country? I don't think so. Yes, it was bad. I'll tell you that, <laughs> right? It's not something that it, it, the Republican Party or anybody should be proud of. But, but let's let's put some context on this thing here. Let's put some context on it. You still have Republicans trying to play into this Democrat game. The media has been doing this, and this is what I've been complaining about. You know, the media they're incentivized. Why? Why is it that you know that the media is against you? You know that the media is overtly in the bed of the Democrat Party. You know that. So why do you keep giving them ammunition to go after you? Why? Stop talking about it. We're done with it. We're done with it. And I'm glad that people like Mitch McConnell and Kevin McCarthy, I know people don't like them. I'm not necessarily big fans of them either. But they're smart enough. They're leaders for the reason. And I keep telling people that like these people are smart. These guys are very smart. They didn't become leaders of the party for no reason. They're smart. They came out and was like, oh, we don't support this. Okay. And they're right. They're 100% right for not supporting it. This is just a partisan game. With the, Anybody that agrees with this bill or goes along with this nonsense, you're literally playing the Democrat game. They will never stop talking about January 6th. So it's no need to give them what they want when it comes to this commission. What happened was not 9-11. It doesn't need to really be investigated more. We know what happened. Okay. What more do you need to investigate? Seriously, what, what more do you need to investigate? What are you going to find that you haven't already found? I mean, the FBI is on top of anybody that was involved in that incident, right? If you got close to the Capitol, you're on the FBI's watch list, okay? So, again, my question is, what more can be done or what more needs to be done that is not already being done? I don't know. I don't know. So, again, when you tell me you need a 9-11 style commission for something that was not 9-11... 
Again, that to me sounds to me like, again, a, a game. It's a political game. And it's a damn shame that you have 35 Republicans that have failed for this nonsense. It really is. And that's why I'm so heated because we have this radical agenda coming from the Biden administration that we need the full brunt of the Republican Party to focus on and to get behind opposing. But we can't because we still got these silly Republicans that want to tap dance for the Democrats and the media over something that is done with. OK, everybody's acknowledged that it was bad. Everybody said that. But see, the Democrats, they don't even have to acknowledge that what happened last summer. Okay, and what happened with all these protests and violence and destruction in the street last time? They don't ever have to acknowledge that that's bad. They never have to acknowledge that. They never have to. And anytime one of their people do wrong, they never have to go after that person. They never have to talk bad about it. They never have to set up any independent commission to investigate them at all. At all. So like I said, if the Republicans can't get an independent investigation into all the protests and violence that happened last year, then this is a non-starter and this should not go anywhere. The good thing is, is that that's most likely what's going to happen in terms of the bill's going to be dead, right? If Mitch McConnell's opposed to it, it's probably dead, okay? But I'm, I'm sick of these Republicans that keep folding to the, the, the liberal media and the Democrats when it comes to these issues, okay? Because they're really getting in the way of winning in 2022. That's what's really happening here. So, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.